Hey, what's going on, everyone? My name is Peter Jennings. I go by CSU Ram 88 across the daily fantasy industry and excited to be doing the first PGA preview here at Fantasy Labs. Basically, on Wednesdays, I'm going to uh, adjust my model, talk about what I'm looking at for the week here in PGA, and uh, excited to get into it. So any feedback you have, uh, definitely open to uh, what you guys want, and uh, hopefully this will be helpful for you guys in building PGA lineups. Also, I uh, want to wish everyone a happy 420. I'm out here in Colorado. Uh, everyone is celebrating, so it's a great time to be alive. NBA playoffs, NHL playoffs, baseball's in full swing, golf's in full swing, and uh, it's a great time of your DFS player especially. So let's dive right into it. Um, I kind of did my sliders a little bit differently than I, I have other weeks. Um, and basically, going through my sliders, long-term adjusted round is obviously something I'm going to be big on. Uh, Colin, who are, who is our uh, PGA director, he's huge on long-term adjusted round. And basically, golfers normalizing. Uh, and obviously, we're trying to pick up on guys who might be improving dramatically, especially younger golfers or golfers who might have fallen off because of an injury or, or whatever other reason. But in general, we can rely on long-term adjusted score uh, to kind of identify some values uh, with the DraftKings pricing. Uh, in addition to that, I'm, I'm going to weigh greens and regulation uh, this week again. I weighted it much more heavily last week um, for the Heritage, but this week I still am going to weight it. There's a correlation with the models with green and regulation, uh, especially short term, but I have both of those here. Uh, also, I'm weighting driving distance this week. Um, I think that the driving distance is just going to set up for these guys to make more birdies uh, on the par fives, which is the one thing I've kind of identified with the course is uh, you need to take advantage of the par fives, especially on DraftKings, where birdies and eagles are just so critical to have in your lineup. So I'm going to I'm gonna have that. So I have long-term driving distance accounted for in the model. And then in addition to that, I have recent adjusted score. I'm a bit – it's hard for me. With recent adjusted score, um, I think that that's priced into the odds. I think people have a recency bias. Uh, and obviously, the odds makers are going to put that um, into their pricing, basically how players have performed recently. But there's also a big thing to recent form just in terms of confidence and where the golfer is. You know, being an avid golfer myself, when you get in a good groove, you tend to stay, you know, uh, when when you're striking the ball well, especially, uh, ball striking, I think, when you're in a groove there, I think that tends to stick around. So it, current form is certainly something I value. Uh, there's an ongoing debate that uh, hopefully – We'll be able to solve a little bit more um, as we do more analysis into DFS golf. But uh, how to value current form is certainly something that uh, I value, and I'm trying to quantify it even more. So I have it at 19 points in the model. Uh, I still have long-term adjusted round uh, a bit higher. And then I have recent greens and regulation score rated really heavily. And this is just something that proves to, to back test well, uh, regardless of the tournament. So I'm going to continue to weight it, and uh, again, kind of what I was talking about before, uh, I really value the guys who are in good form recently in terms of greens and regulation, because that just identifies guys who are you know, basically having good ball striking. So I'm going to take that into account, even at this tournament, where I don't think it's as valuable as, say, Heritage last week again, uh, but I, I, I like this, and this is another way to kind of capture current form, and, and really capture the current form that I want um, in, in the golfers. So then I also have recent driving distance score as, as, uh, to finish out the rest of the model. I might tinker with some other things, and, I, and to be totally honest, uh, when I'm making golf lineups, I make a variety of lineups with different, uh, you know, basically bit different sliders weighted differently uh, to see who pops and what type of model. Uh, but this is just a, a model I think it works pretty well for this week. So let's look at the results and talk through some of the plays. J.B. Holmes rating number one. Uh, that's Colin's favorite golfer as well this week. Just crushes it with driving distance and... Uh, you know, he's a little wild, but this is a pretty wide open course. You can see his driving accuracy is really poor at only 55%, but he's not going to get penalized too much uh, at this course for that. So I think he makes a really good play, and uh, especially in the 10-1 range, I think he's the, the, the guy above 10K I'm most willing to pay for, especially in tournaments. Uh, Brandon Grace is rating really well, and I'm actually probably going to fade him. Um, I think he's a good play. If I, if, I, if I were to play him, it'd be in cash games, it wouldn't be in tournaments. I think the recency bias that people have uh, is going to lead to higher ownership on Grace. And I think that, in general, there's not going to be too much uh, ownership on one guy because I think there's not a clear-cut top guy you want to take. There's a couple values that might be, pay, be pretty heavily owned. But uh, especially at the high end, I think they'll be pretty scattered with the exception of maybe Brandon Grace just because he won recently. And uh, I don't know. I, it, there might be some mental fatigue here. Uh, it's mostly an ownership fade. But uh, my gut, for whatever reason... 
is telling me to fade uh, Brandon Grace. And if he won this week, wouldn't shock me at all. He's one of the best golfers in this field, and he's playing great right now. And I totally get why people like him, but um, I'm going to fade him for tournaments for sure. And I think he's definitely a better cash game play. Jason Kokrak's the next guy. Um, we talked about him on the pod. I, I He still pops for me, and I, he's popping because of driving distance. Um which, when you look at the rest of the guys at the top of the mile, is least pro trends, and, and I definitely like every other golfer in terms of just like a raw projection better than Kokrak, but it is interesting to see him popping so much in my specific model, and I think I'm going to play him in some tournaments. Brendan Steele is a guy that I really like this week. Um, I think he's a, a great play in general. Uh, you know, he's won here recently. He might be somewhat heavily owned. I know he's missed two cuts, um, and he had a really, really awful showing at Heritage, but I'm going to buy the bounce back here. Uh, I, I like him quite a bit. And, uh, you know, he's one of the riskier guys, I guess, in cash because he's had such poor current form. But um, I still believe he's a, a decent play at only 8,800. And the last guy I'm going to talk about here in this kind of top range, or at least top rated guys, is Brooks Kepka. Um, he's a guy that I, I really like this week. I probably will have him in a lot of formats. Uh, love his driving distance. Just love the caliber of golfer that he is. And uh, I think he's still positioned to make a charge, and he's really young. And uh, I, I think that there's, you know, these young guys on tour, I think they're going to make a leap. Uh, you know, the Justin Thomases, uh, obviously we've already seen it with Spieth, but Kepka, Kazire, I'm going to talk about more about Bryson DeChambeau. Uh, these young golfers, I can buy that they're getting dramatically better um, and that they have a lot of, you know, opportunity uh, to start becoming a better DFS golfer too. So uh, especially with the, the traits that Kepka has being a really big hitter, uh, I love him just in general on DraftKings. So you can see some other guys. I'll joke about Keegan Bradley. He's going to be a tough for me to take, uh, but he was popping a little bit in my model. I, I, I really struggle with him. Um, some other guys that just, you know, everyone wants to talk about Phil Mickelson. I think he's a good play. He's actually played pretty well this year. The only kind of bugaboo has been his driving accuracy. And, and again, I don't think that's going to hurt him too much here. I uh, love Bryson DeChambeau. I went on a huge rant just uh, basically professing my man crush on Bryson DeChambeau. Wish I could invest in him in other ways outside of DFS, but uh, unfortunately cannot. If he were a stock, I'm very long, bullish, Bryson DeChambeau. So you know I'll have some exposure to him. Um, and then just kind of going through, there's not that many guys who uh, stand out too much. So if you want to build a lineup, let's just kind of end the, the segment here. I talked about some of the guys who rate the best. I, I should have mentioned Ches Reeve too. We talked extensively about the podcast. He's not rating as well in this, this, uh, this specific model. But uh, the one thing with Ches Reeve here, if you look at his game log, guy makes cut after cut after cut which is so critical and so huge for cash games and if you look at his salary i mean he used to be a really really cheap guy hovering in that 6k range now he's starting to come back up i know that makes colin uh, upset but uh he's, he's a great play in cash games and uh the secret is out on him and we'll see his ownership continue to climb uh, at least until he gets higher price so if you're playing this week this is one of the probably the last weeks you can take advantage of ches Reeve's uh, great price tag all right, so uh, roster construction and what I talked about before. If you kind of look up here, obviously the expensive guys are rating well. I talked about in the pot hall, I'll probably build a lot of a middle tier uh, kind of lineups. Uh, so some guys who, you know, I just talked about Ches Reeve. We're making like a, a cash game team. I don't mind plugging him in. Uh, you, you leave yourself a good amount of salary left, um, you know, 84.60 per player. And I think he's a good cheap guy to, to have in your lineup. Uh, out of the other guys who are rating pretty, have, pretty well here and the guy I didn't talk about, Patrick Rogers, I love quite a bit this week with his driving distance. Um, he's a guy that I think could have a really, really nice week uh, in general. Um, he's got a lot of upside. Again, a pretty young golfer. And uh, with the driving distance, he's one of the guys I really like at the price. Uh, he's been touted around the industry, and uh, I think he's a pretty good cash game play. Maybe not as good of a tournament play because of the ownership. Uh, so let's let's just fill out the rest of this roster. I probably won't use this specific one in cash, uh, obviously, but uh, I'm going to be doing something very similar. I'm definitely going to have exposure to the guys that I put in this lineup. So I talked about how I love Brooks. Let's throw him in there. Uh, I love Brendan Steele. Now, you see here, we, we put in an expensive guy, Brooks. We kind of have to adjust for that in salary. Uh, so we need to find some guys who are kind of cheaper in the, the 79, you know, 100 range or, or somewhere you know, either in the high sevens or I have to go into the sixes and then pick someone a little bit more expensive. So it gets a little tough here uh, in terms of the roster construction. Um, I'm not going to fill out the entire lineup uh, just so you guys can kind of fiddle with the last couple spots here. Uh, but if I were to, you know, put someone in this specific lineup, I think that you could look to a variety of guys. You know, if you wanted to go a stud and a cheap guy, you go Phil Mickelson and then you have to, you have to really, you know, kind of 
dive into the bottom of the barrel, which I don't like as much. So I prefer uh, to go someone who is a little bit more reasonable in price to kind of go more the more balanced route. I would probably never do this, but if you like Keegan Bradley, if you think he's a good play, you could plug him in and then you have 7,900 to spend. So I think it's interesting this week how you build rosters. I, I definitely would go more balanced uh, just to fill out a roster. If you don't use Brooks, uh, you really have a lot more flexibility if we sort by salary. Um, you can see here now that we took Brooks out, we can basically live in the, the 8K range, which is really nice. Uh, you know, you plug in like a Ryan Palmer, a Chris Kirk, and all of a sudden you have 8,700 left. I mean, it doesn't work out salary wise, but you can see that you get a really quality lineup that's balanced. And I think that's probably the way to go in cash games. Uh, what I was building before is probably a better tournament strategy uh, just because you're gonna have to risk one of the lower tier guys. So I hope you guys found this valuable. Uh, kind of just, you know, spitballing all my thoughts here uh, about the week. Uh, I will add a little bit more structure and definitely want some feedback on what you guys would like to see. Uh, but Fantasy Labs is a huge part of my process, and uh, I really think it's been helpful. I've had a lot of success recently in PGA, which I know there's a lot of variance in that. But uh, I do think my process is better than it ever has been uh, in pertaining to uh, playing PGA just because the Fantasy Lab tools are great. And obviously, I've been on the couch with the Achilles injury, so I've been able to watch uh, every hole of golf, which I, I do think has a lot of value. I know there's some guys out there who go to a lot of these tournaments, and uh, I think there's a lot of subjective edges that you can gain just from really following the tour and hearing things. So hope you guys found this helpful. We'll be back again on the podcast, and I uh, would love to hear any comments that you have on Twitter. I'm at CSURAM88. Uh, feel free to hit me up with feedback, questions, or anything of that nature. Good luck. Hope to see more Fantasy Lab subscribers at the top of the leaderboard.